welcome silhouettes of this darkness. During the six years which separate 1819 from 1825, the prioress of the Petit Picpus was Mademoiselle de Blamer, whose name, in religion, was Mother Innocente. She came of the family of Marguerite de Blamer, author of Lives of the Saints of the Order of Saint Benoit. She had been re-elected. She was a woman about sixty years of age, short, thick, singing like a cracked pot, says the letter which we have already quoted. An excellent woman, moreover, and the only merry one in the whole convent, and for that reason adored. She was learned, erudite, wise, competent, curiously proficient in history, crammed with Latin, stuffed with Greek, full of Hebrew, and more of a Benedictine monk than a Benedictine nun. The sub-prioress was an old Spanish nun, Mother Cenaris, who was almost blind. The most esteemed among the vocal mothers were Mother Saint Tonarine. The treasurer, Mother Saint Gertrude, the chief mistress of the novices. Mother Saint Ange, the assistant mistress. Mother Annunciation, the sacristan. Mother Saint Augustine, the nurse, the only one in the convent who was malicious. Then Mother Saint Mechtilda. Mademoiselle Gauvin. Very young and with a beautiful voice. Mother de Angies. Mademoiselle Droet. Who had been in the convent of the Filst Dieu, and in the convent du Tresseur between Geysers and Magni. Mother Saint Joseph. Mademoiselle de Cogaludo. Mother Saint Adelaide. Mademoiselle de Auvergne. Mother Misericorde. Mademoiselle de Cifuentes, who could not resist austerities. Mother Compassion. Mademoiselle de la Miltiere, received at the age of sixty in defiance of the rule, and very wealthy. Mother Providence. Mademoiselle de Laudonier. Mother Presentation. Mademoiselle de Seguenza. Who was prioress in 1847. And finally, Mother Saint Seligny. Sister of the sculptor Seracchia. Who went mad. Mother Saint John Tal. Mademoiselle de Susan. Who went mad. There was also. Among the prettiest of them. A charming girl of three and twenty, who was from the Isle de Bourbon, a descendant of the Chevalier Rose, whose name had been Mademoiselle Rose, and who was called Mother Assumption. Mother Saint Mechtilda, int Arusted with the singing and the choir, was fond of making use of the pupils in this quarter. She usually took a complete scale of them. That is to say. 7, from 10 to 16 years of age, inclusive, of assorted voices and sizes, whom she made sing standing, drawn up in a line, side by side, according to age, from the smallest to the largest. This presented to the eye, something in the nature of a reed pipe of young girls, a sort of living pan pipe made of angels. Those of the lay sisters whom the scholars loved most were Sister Euphrasy. Sister Saint Marguerite, Sister Saint Martha, who was in her dotage, and Sister Saint Michel, whose long nose made them laugh. All these women were gentle with the children. The nuns were severe only towards themselves. No fire was lighted except in the school, and the food was choice compared to that in the convent. Moreover, they lavished a thousand cares on their scholars. Only, when a child passed near a nun and addressed her, the nun never replied. This rule of silence had had this effect, that throughout the whole convent, speech had been withdrawn from human creatures, and bestowed on inanimate objects. Now it was the church bell which spoke, now it was the gardener's bell. A very sonorous bell. Placed beside the port rest. And which was audible throughout the house. Indicated by its varied peals which formed a sort of acoustic telegraph, all the actions of material life which were to be performed, and summoned to the parlor, in case of need, such or such an inhabitant of the house. Each person and each thing had its own peal. The prioress had one and one, the sub-prioress one and two. Six five announced lessons, so that the pupils never said to go to lessons, but to go to six five. Four four was Madame de Genlis's signal. It was very often heard. 
Say Ellie Diable a cotter, it's the very deuce, said the uncharitable. Tenine Strokes announced a great event. It was the opening of the door of seclusion, a frightful sheet of iron bristling with bolts which only turned on its hinges in the presence of the archbishop. With the exception of the archbishop and the gardener, no man entered the convent, as we have already said. The schoolgirls saw two others. One, the chaplain, the Abbe Baines, old and ugly, whom they were permitted to contemplate in the choir, through a grating. The other the drawing master, M. Ansi Oz, whom the letter, of which we have perused a few lines, calls M. Ansiot, and describes as a frightful old hunchback. It will be seen that all these men were carefully chosen. Such was this curious house. 